This is not a normal golf club, obviously. It can do two very special things. The first is that it's all of the golf clubs in one. Say I wanted this to be an eight iron. All I do is turn this knob, boom, now it's an eight iron. Maybe I want it to be a two iron. Turn the knob, now it's two iron. And that's really cool, but that's not even the coolest thing that this club does. I have a problem where I can't swing the golf club consistently at all. I'd really rather say to the club, I would like the ball to go maybe 120 yards. And then when I swing the club, it will detect what's going on and then correct the head of the club in real time to make my shot go closer to the desired distance. So I'm gonna show you how I made this, how it works, and of course, put it to the test. I'll also be challenging my wife to a chipping competition. So is this now a prank? It's a golf club, how could it possibly be a prank? This project totally kicked my engineering butt. It took two major hardware iterations to get it right. The first club that I built was actually hydraulic, which sounds totally awesome, but also doesn't work for reasons that I'll get into. So in this design, I focus on adjusting the loft angle of the club, which is the angle of the face striking the ball. So what I'm doing is I'm sensing where the club is going as well as the speed and adjusting the loft angle so that the ball goes basically the right distance. I also made this, I guess, apparatus you'd call it. It goes on to the upper shaft of the golf club near the grip and it allows me to rotate the entire face of the club. This should allow me to correct for slice and hook. I do plan to integrate this in a club. I'll probably make a future video about that. Although in the meantime, I'm really interested in the idea of human robot augmentation, not just for being sports. I think the next frontier for me is music. I wanna see if I can make myself good at violin and take the fun out of that as well. So if that sounds interesting, you should subscribe. Also, if you have any other good ideas about human robot augmentation, leave a comment. I'd love to hear about them and maybe I'll build them. Getting the face of the club to move to a different angle, at least in principle, is not very hard. Certainly nowhere near as difficult as the backboard that I built in my previous project. It's small and light and the distance that I have to go is not very far, but it turns out it's very hard to do and that's because of golf. When the ball strikes the face of the club, it is insanely violent. It's like Walmart at 5 a.m. on Black Friday. They only have three flat screen TVs, but they're $25. It's bad. It can generate up to 4,000 pounds of force. As a point of reference, my milling machine is 2,000 pounds. It's crazy. So this is a little hobby servo. It's used for RC planes and cars and stuff like that. This little arm moves left and right and they're very handy. I could attach this to the face of the golf club and move it around to get it to go where I want. Problem is, imagine I then take a hammer and I smash this arm. It's gonna destroy this. So my first attempt to deal with these giant forces was building a hydraulic golf club, which isn't as insane as it sounds, maybe a little bit. I needed a way to move the face angle of the club quickly and also in a way that's very stiff and can take a beating. I designed and made two little hydraulic pumps that can pump fluid through these hoses. This is obviously not yet miniaturized for the golf club. I'd probably be wearing this on my back. So the hydraulic fluid goes through these tubes and actuates two little hydraulic cylinders that I built into the club. So unfortunately, this club has a pretty fatal flaw, which is that it breaks apart every time you use it. When I originally designed this system, I was planning on using proper hydraulic line. So when I ran the numbers, I saw that I would basically need two of these engines to force the fluid through the hoses fast enough. Imagine trying to suck a 55 gallon milkshake through a straw in 10 seconds. You'd have to be able to suck pretty darn hard in order for that to happen. But if you make the straw bigger, it becomes easier to do that. So to make the system work, I bumped the size of the hoses up. And this is where I committed a terrible sin that totally perverted the design. But I knew what I was doing. I honestly even liked it. These hoses are stretchy. They're very stretchy. If you pressurize them, they get longer. And that's a problem for a hydraulic system where I'm generating high pressures and I need it to not move. When I swing the club, and hit a ball, I don't feel the impact of that ball with the club until the ball has already left the club and is flying away. And this is due to the speed of sound. When I strike a golf ball with a golf club, it generates a pressure wave in the material, which as far as physics are concerned, is basically sound. It goes at the speed of sound up the golf club. In 500 microseconds, the sound will go to maybe about here. And this is what I was hoping would make my hydraulic system work, even though the hoses were stretchy. The shock wave from hitting the ball with this club would generate pressure in the fluid, which would also go at the speed of sound. And it should only go not too far up the hose before the ball is gone. There's only this much hose that can stretch out. And I was hoping that that would mean the face would move a minimal amount and that it would be acceptable. The problem, as far as I can tell, is that that wave does propagate up the hoses. The system is very springy, so all that energy goes up and then it shoots right back down and launches the face of the club off. To try to deal with this, 
I did get some proper hydraulic hose with the right inside diameter, but this is just way too heavy. I can't put this on a golf club. I decided just to scrap this, which hurt me to do. It was very sad. I really like this club a lot. It's very cool looking. It just isn't good enough. All right, I think I have a conceptual way for how to make an actuator that can survive the forces of golfing without immediately breaking, but I am having a heck of a time trying to fit it into a club. This is probably iteration five or six of this design, and this one almost kind of works, but it still has some pretty fatal flaws, I think. I'm gonna just keep chugging. I think I'm close. Okay, so here's what I came up with. I'm using a servo, a really fast one, to actuate the face of the golf club. And I know I said before that servo motors can't work, but this one works because I'm doing a very sneaky trick. I'm rotating the face of the golf club by moving this rotational cam here. The geometry is such that it does not matter how hard I hit the face of this golf club with the golf ball, zero force is gonna be transferred to the servo. And let me explain why. This red triangle represents the cam that's moved left and right by the servo. This blue represents the matching cam that's, that's rotated when this moves in and out. So if this red cam slides out, the blue cam slides down and vice versa. This is how it converts linear motion into rotational motion. The reason that my arrangement works is that this angle is very shallow. I can push on the top of this green wedge with any amount of force and it will not be able to push this wedge out. Basically what happens is as this angle gets shallow, the contact forces between the two surfaces increases, which increases the friction. Also, when I push down on the top of this wedge, portion of the force is going sideways, trying to eject this wedge from underneath of it. There's an angle, the force to eject the wedge is less than the frictional force, and it does not matter how much force I put on the top, it will not eject. A neat little parallel is this is why screws don't unscrew. If you think about it, a screw is just a wedge that's wrapped around a shaft. If the thread is shallow enough, it doesn't matter how hard I push or pull on the screw, it won't unthread. So the other cool thing about this design is that it was fully qualified using almost entirely 3D printed parts. I did this because I didn't want to spend a bunch of time machining a lot of parts that don't work at all. So in fact, I normally wouldn't even have attempted this, but I'm using a very special material called Durable. It's designed for high impact and high wear applications, which is great for a golf club. I did eventually break it, so it is cracked here. And that happened when I plowed the golf club into the ground at what felt like Mach 1, but we'll never know the speed. For years, I ran the engineering teams that developed these printers, and I hated this material because it is really difficult to get it printing reliably. And so I just had a blind hatred for it, but now that I'm using it, it's, it's quite good. So after qualifying the parts with printed parts, I went back and machined these. Although I can use the club with the printed parts, they do flex a good bit more than metal does, and that absorbs a lot of energy from the swing. Like you, can, you can actually feel a pretty big difference. I'm still using 3D printed add-ons for the stuff that doesn't have to be metal, and that way I don't have to machine it. The cam parts are still printed, and that's basically because they would be a real nightmare to machine And with my setup. There's nothing really inherently bulky about this design, which is pretty cool. If I made these out of, say, steel, this whole mechanism could be way smaller than it is here. The same thing is true for this servo. There's no reason it needs to be this big, and all the wires could be run up the shaft. All the electronics would be on, could be on one small PCB, kind of in the top of the handle with a small battery. So I finally have mechanics that I think can work. I just have to get the software and the electronics working. So I was just working on bringing up the electronics for this and you're not gonna believe what I just did. All right, pins just straighten up a little bit. Thank goodness I'm a mature adult who can handle this in a very mature way. I promise that's exactly how it went down. So this board is the IMU. It's what I'll be using to figure out where the club is in space and how fast it's going and all that stuff. I just ripped off these castellations, which are what I was gonna be using to get data off this board. And this board is very expensive. It's about $350, so I'm not gonna be buying another one. There's USB on this as well. Theoretically, I should be able to talk to this over USB and get the data off that way. Unfortunately, I suck at USB. Like I said, I'm not buying another one, so I guess I'm writing a USB driver. Oh, man.
It's like 5 a.m. on Sunday morning. I've been banging my head against this stupid USB thing for like 10 hours now, and I should have just bought another IMU. This is a mistake. The reason that it has been working is because I had a one instead of a four. Anyway, it works now, and I'm going to sleep. All right, I got some sleep. Let's talk about the software. What the software needs to do is determine the speed that the club head is gonna be going when it impacts the ball, as well as the angle of the club shaft relative to the ground. It's not a good assumption that the club shaft is vertical. I need to know the angle of the club shaft so that the club face is the right angle relative to the world and the ground and gravity so that the ball will go in the right direction. If you look at a club swing, the club starts at a standstill, it accelerates throughout the stroke, and it will sometimes even drop speed before it hits the ball. When I start the swing, the club isn't going very fast. As I accelerate it, the speed gets faster and faster. The reason this is tricky is that I need to rotate the face of the club to whatever angle it needs to go before it strikes the ball, and the speed is changing all the time. So what I'm trying to do is predict the speed that the face of the club will be going relative to the ball earlier. So what I did is I just kind of brute forced this problem. I collected a ton of data of me swinging. Each swing gives me a curve of the velocity I'm going versus the angle of the club. So this might be the start of the stroke up here, and then this is the velocity that's going when it strikes the ball. Swings that start shallower, like a chip, might look like this. Because the club is starting at a lower angle, I'm at zero velocity here. You can imagine collecting lots of these and there's noise. So what I do is I take all these curves and I compute the average swing trajectory for each starting position. This one might correspond to this position and so on. Then when the club senses me swinging, I look up the closest curve. So let's imagine that I'm taking a swing and I've matched to this swing profile. The tricky thing is that depending on if I'm swinging the club harder or softer, I might get a profile like this, or I might get a profile like this. I also might get something totally different, in which case this method breaks down. I have some ideas for how I would deal with that, but I was trying to keep it simpler. So imagine I start taking a swing and it's going to follow this trajectory. As the data starts to come in from the IMU, I see what my velocity profile looks like. I then take the ideal velocity curve and I scale it so that it matches this one. It doesn't perfectly predict the result because they're different trajectories, although the shapes do seem to be relatively consistent. And then I look forward to the end and assume that's the speed that I'm gonna be going. This seems to work reasonably for my testing. It's tuned to me, obviously. If I was trying to make this a product, I wouldn't use this method, but it was a quick way to, to get it done. So the other problem that I mentioned is I don't know what angle the club is going to be when it strikes the ball. Which of these is it going to be? This has a very big impact on where the ball goes. This problem is a tricky one, and I actually thought of a few very complicated schemes to try to predict what the angle would be. So I just decided to sidestep the whole problem by assuming that the swing starts at the ball. So I just assume that if the club is like this when the swing starts, and then the swing comes up and then comes back down, it's gonna hit at the same angle. That's not a totally safe assumption. It seems okay for now. That's pretty much all the interesting things about this club. I did pack all the electronics into this way too small enclosure. So this thing has two main operating modes. There's distance select, where I enter the distance that I would like the ball to go. And whenever it's in this mode, it's continuously listening to the IMU and it's looking for a swing. It will start adjusting the face of the club to wherever it thinks it needs to be so the ball will go the correct distance. And the other mode is basically this acting like a normal club so I have the ability to select whatever club I want with this. I think the notable thing here is it does go up to 11. I mean, it has to, right? I guess that would be a sand wedge. Even just this mode here is pretty cool. The fact that I have a single club that's all the clubs is neat, but I think the robotic aspect is cooler. That's pretty much it. I think all that's left is to put this thing through its paces. I've challenged my wife to a friendly chipping challenge, and what we're gonna do is take three shots each and see who can place them most consistently downrange. Short distance, so no strength advantage or anything like that. And we're going to see, with the help of this, if it levels the playing field. So is this now a prank? It's a golf club. How could it possibly be a prank? This club stinks. Maybe you stink. I just played 18 holes of a par three with this club. It survived, and I have the results. With this club, I shot an 85, which still isn't great. And with the regular clubs, I shot a 94. And that 
sounds like a meaningful difference, but I'm not sure that all that had to do with this club, at least not directly. When I'm using this club, I feel like a better golfer and I was just hitting the ball better with it. To really know, I need to collect more data so I think what I need to do is shoot like 500 balls with and without this club and then measure the distribution. But I'd really like to get the slice and hook correction in before I do that because I only want to do that once. Hopefully we'll get back to it and have a super duper club in the near future. If you like this, you should subscribe. I build stuff like this all the time. It's a lot of fun. And that is all I have for now. Thanks.